There are two big trends that I think are going to make investors a lot of money over the next few years. So in this episode, I'm going to show you both of those trends and four no-brainer ways to invest in them way before they're priced into the market. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. The first trend is that microchips are getting faster and smaller over time. I know you already know that, but I can't overstate just how insane this trend has been over the last half century. Long story short, the iPhone 14 is roughly 200,000 times more powerful than Apollo 11's main computer, which is the computer that got humanity to the moon and back about 54 years ago. But here's the thing, you can also fit about 300 of those iPhones into that same space, which means that the current iPhone is actually about 60 million times more powerful than the Apollo 11 computer if they were the same size. That's almost a doubling in computer power every two years for the last 54 years, just like Moore's Law predicted. Think about that. Computers got 60 million times more powerful in less than one human lifespan. And that growth is actually only getting faster today, thanks to things like hardware accelerators and AI. The second trend is one that far fewer people are talking about, which is that interacting with computers is also getting much easier. So more people can use them for more kinds of tasks, which in turn makes many different kinds of markets bigger over time. 50 years ago, the biggest enterprises in the world had mainframe computers that were programmed by specialists using punch cards. Punch cards were both the input device and how you would store information. So for example, the software on the Apollo 11 computer was programmed using IBM punch cards, and the astronauts also used punch cards to send code to the automatic landing system. Obviously, no one had one of these bad boys at home. But then, in the 1980s, IBM started shipping computers with keyboards, which were easy enough to use that computers saw massive adoption by normal consumers. Next came the touchscreen, which really took off in the late 2000s with the iPhone. Last year, mobile devices accounted for more than 50% of all gaming and 60% of all website traffic in the world, which makes touchscreens the main way that humanity interacts with computers today. And now, there's voice control. Text mom, I love you. See? You don't even need to mom says, I love you. Gets me every time. And next, we'll have eye tracking and gesture controls. The biggest companies in the world are already working on this today, with products like the Apple Vision Pro and the Meta Quest. These platforms also take advantage of our first trend, since chips becoming smaller and more powerful will make mixed reality headsets lighter and faster. Okay, so what are some great ways to invest in these two overlapping trends? The answer really depends on your time horizon as an investor. Companies like AMD and Qualcomm are making chips smaller and more powerful today. As you probably know, AMD makes CPUs for data centers and personal computers. But what you may not know is that AMD has quietly almost doubled its share of the data center CPU market last year alone. That's because they focus on power efficiency, which means getting the most compute power per watt instead of the most compute power at any cost. That's exactly what lets chips get smaller without sacrificing performance, and it lets companies build more powerful software that's also easier to use. That's why AMD also makes the semi-custom chips that power infotainment systems in cars, as well as inside video game consoles. AMD has basically 100% of the market share for processors in game consoles like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series S and Series X. And Tesla recently replaced Intel's Atom chips with AMD's accelerated Ryzen processors in the newer Model 3s and the Model Ys. And AMD's chips are already in the Model S and Model X as well. Likewise, Qualcomm designs chips and software for many self-driving applications, like interpreting camera data and navigation, planning routes, and powering in-car displays. And Qualcomm's cockpit platform even lets cars connect to online services like Netflix and Amazon, which more people will want when cars drive us instead of us driving them. Qualcomm actually dominates the connected car market, with an 80% market share. And this market is growing by well over 20% per year. That means Qualcomm's 80% share will become more and more valuable over time. But Qualcomm's main market is the mobile processor market, where they have a whopping 44% share thanks to their flagship Snapdragon CPUs. That's more than Apple and Samsung combined. And just like AMD, Qualcomm's chips focus on getting the most performance per watt, even during the most compute-intensive tasks on smartphones like real-time ray tracing in video games. So if you're looking for two no-brainer ways to invest in these trends right now, both AMD and Qualcomm belong on your radar, since they're currently market leaders when it comes to designing the small but powerful chips in many of the devices that we use today. 
Both of these companies report earnings at the very beginning of August, so be on the lookout for that. It's no coincidence that Qualcomm also designs the chips for augmented, virtual, and mixed reality headsets. Both the MetaQuest 2 and the upcoming MetaQuest 3 are powered by Qualcomm's 8th generation Snapdragon XR chips. I know that most people still write off augmented and virtual reality today, but people also wrote off phones with no buttons, and the internet before that, and personal computers before that. I think it's going to be a very interesting period where we'll have an information marketplace, a I, new I, way of I, life. I, I quite disagree. I, I want to get him angry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think uh, that won't work. Uh. But I bet that we'll see head-mounted displays and gesture controls become mainstream sooner than most people think, simply because there are way too many obvious benefits. For example, infinitely large screens, or as many individual displays as you want, in any size, shape, and configuration. On top of that, mixed reality headsets can overlay useful digital information onto the physical world. Or on the flip side, VR can provide fully immersive experiences that help tune out the physical world altogether. Like working by a quiet lake instead of in a busy office. Yeah, that's my kind of social interaction. Today's VR headsets are already much lighter and much smaller than they were just a few years ago. And they could look and feel like wearing normal sunglasses by the end of the decade. According to Grandview Research, the virtual reality market is expected to grow by 27% per year through 2030, and that was before Apple announced the Vision Pro, which I expect to be a serious catalyst for this market over the next few years. So if you believe that the next logical steps for our two computing trends are headsets and gesture controls, the company that I'd invest in here is Apple. Again, total no-brainer, just like I said at the start of this video. Not just because they have the money, the loyal following, and the talent to make mixed reality headsets mainstream, but the Apple App Store is also the most widely used mobile app ecosystem in the world today, with a whopping 62% global market share. That means that mobile app developers and VR developers will want to port existing apps and create new ones for Vision OS, and more apps will bring in more customers to the platform, which will bring even more developers, and so on. I think that the Vision Pro is going to be a huge platform for Apple because they would definitely rather have one of their own products disrupt the iPhone than something from Meta Platforms or Google disrupt their biggest moneymaker. Just because Apple is the biggest company in the world today doesn't mean that they don't have plenty of room to grow, especially if they take a whole new computing platform mainstream. But this next company could have a shot at being even bigger than Apple because it takes our two trends to their ultimate conclusion, which is the brain-computer interface. Elon Musk co-founded Neuralink in 2016 to create a device that would wirelessly transmit brain signals via Bluetooth. The first goal was to develop a whole brain interface so that people with neurological issues can control devices with their minds. That way, even if people have an irreversible spinal issue or a degenerative disease, they can interface with their phones, their computers, and the outside world. You may remember Neuralink's demo from two years ago, where a monkey named Pager was given an N1 implant and learned to play Pong with his mind. Here's how it works. When you move your muscles, certain sets of neurons are activated in a specific pattern that's associated with that motion. So by listening in on that pattern of brain signals, you can predict how someone is about to move. If someone has a spinal injury, the signal might not make it from the brain to the muscles, but that brain signal is still there. That's where Neuralink comes in. First, the system is calibrated by recording Pager's brain activity as he uses the joystick. That brain activity data is wirelessly transmitted from the Neuralink N1 implant to a decoder. Then, after collecting just a few minutes of data, Neuralink can develop a model for the relationship between the patterns of brain activity, muscle movements, and in this case, the different joystick movements that they would produce. Then with that model, they can unplug the joystick because they're using the real-time data feed of Pager's brain activity to wirelessly tell the computer what to do. So this computer is literally being operated telepathically as Neuralink records and decodes the electrical signals from the monkey's brain. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, Elon Musk and Neuralink are awesome, but this is still a private company. So why are we talking about it? Well, that's where Disraptor comes in. Disraptor is a private equity investing app that makes investing in pre-IPO companies easy and affordable. The analysts at Disraptor handpick only the best companies and make sure that you know what the company does, its market opportunities, and of course, helps you understand the risks. For example, the people who invested in Palantir back when it was private saw a 133% net profit from that deal. 
That's because Disruptor focuses on technology companies that have already become market leaders, which means you can get a piece of some of the most exciting private companies in the world, like OpenAI, SpaceX, and of course, Neuralink. Huh, I just realized that Elon Musk started all three of those companies. Talk about a no-brainer. And right now, accredited investors can use the Disraptor app to invest in Neuralink for as little as $5,000. But this round closes on August 7th, so make sure to use my link in the description below today. By the way, Neuralink is only valued at $6 billion today. That's not even half of Snapchat's market cap, even after Snapchat's huge crash after their most recent earnings call. And I think that Neuralink will be worth a lot more than that very soon because they just got FDA approval for their first human clinical trial, which they plan to start as early as this year. This is a huge deal. Late last year, Neuralink hosted a show and tell event where Elon talked about Neuralink's journey from the first prototype to making a safe, long-lasting, and affordable implant. The current implant is only a little bigger than a quarter and comes with 64 threads, each of which is about 20 times thinner than a human hair. Because they're too small for human hands to work with, Neuralink had to develop a special robot called the R1, which inserts the thread into the brain under a neurosurgeon's supervision. The robot can insert up to six threads a minute, which means the whole insertion process takes less than 15 minutes. According to Elon Musk, the surgery is as simple as LASIK vision correction. I personally got LASIK about 10 years ago now, and I can tell you that it was quick, painless, and I was back at work the next day. But here's the thing. The implant also needs to be upgradable, since no one wants to have an iPhone 1 in their head when the iPhone 14 is available. The current version of the implant has much longer range, charges twice as fast, and has two times longer battery life than the initial prototype. So it's taking advantage of those same two trends that I've been talking about throughout this video. As a result, Neuralink isn't just innovating on the implant itself. They're also finding ways to make the surgery quicker, less invasive, and more repeatable. Even though the implant is designed to work for decades and without interruption, Elon Musk envisions a future where people upgrade their brain implants like they upgrade their iPhones today. In fact, Pager, the monkey from the Mind Pong demo, recently got his implant upgraded. But I think what excites me the most is that Neuralink can also send information back to the brain by using the threads to electrically stimulate neurons. Just listen to this. Uh, the, the, the first two applications we're going to aim for in humans um, are restoring uh, vision. The, the, I think this is like notable in that even if someone has never had vision ever, like they were born blind, uh, we're, we believe they can, they, they can, we can still restore vision uh, because the, the visual part of the, the visual part of the cortex is still, still there. So just like Neuralink can create a map between neural activity and muscle movements, they can also create one between activity in the visual cortex and whatever was stimulating it. That means if somebody was born blind, the implant could still restore their vision. Over the long term, this is the ultimate evolution of chips getting smaller and computers getting easier to use. One day we'll be able to do incredible things like streaming music and movies directly to our brain not just for entertainment, but also to share information and even learn new skills. I know Kung Fu. Show me. One day you'll be able to learn about anything in fractions of the time, calculate things in your head at lightning speeds, and even directly interface with artificial intelligence. Elon Musk has said many times that Neuralink's ultimate goal is to connect people with AI so that as it gets more powerful, so do we. Yeah, yeah, Ch a chip and a bunch of tiny wires. This, this would be implanted surgically. And it would do what? Could you input? Could you download Jim? Mm-hmm, yes. Well, what, what, what? <laughs> the long-term aspiration for Neuralink was, would be to achieve a symbiosis with uh, artificial intelligence um, and to achieve a sort of democratization of, of intelligence uh, such that it is not monopolistically held in a purely digital form by a, governments and, and large corporations. Basically an effort for man to merge with machine in yes. a healthy way. Yes. To beat machines, you basically have to merge with machines. Most likely, yes. And with how fast AI has been developing this year alone, that long-term mission is becoming more important than ever. But in the near term, Neuralink's technology has the potential to transform the way we treat an insane variety of brain diseases, from stroke and paralysis to Parkinson's, dementia, and even Alzheimer's. If somebody loses all motor function, the implant could let them operate their phone maybe even faster than somebody with working hands. 
I see you out there typing with your pointer fingers. And Neuralink could even implant more chips on the other side of a spinal injury. Then they can transmit signals from the brain to these other implants, bypassing the injured areas altogether. That would give people with disabilities at least some of those abilities back. And to me, that's a future worth investing in. Speaking of which, don't forget that accredited investors can invest in Neuralink right now thanks to Disraptor. But that offer closes on August 7th, so make sure to use my link in the description below before then. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That lets me know to put out more research like this. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.